tens of thousands of restaurants across the country went out of business in 2020 because of this pandemic, and they're not coming back. What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com and welcome to the Minority Mindset. Cities across the United States are losing some of their favorite hometown foods because shutdowns and social distancing measures are making it impossible for some restaurants to stay in business. This restaurant crisis is especially painful to me because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't go to bars or clubs but I love going out to eat at restaurants. That's my version of going out. Me and my friends had this thing before the pandemic where every single week we would go out to a new restaurant, we'd hang out, eat, laugh, and try new foods. But ever since this pandemic started in March, me, like millions of Americans, have not been going to restaurants. For the first few months of this pandemic, I did not eat out at all, which had its benefits because I was saving a ton of money on food, and I also was eating pretty healthy because everything I was eating was home cooked. Then by around August, I started going back to restaurants not to eat there, but through carryouts. And now every once in a while, I will eat at a restaurant, but it's not the same. I know it's not just me because we have so many major chains around the country going bankrupt. CPK, Sizzler, Bravo, and Ruby Tuesday have all filed for bankruptcy. Restaurant bankruptcies don't just happen in a bubble. They have ripple effects, and I'm going to be talking about them today. But before we do that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below because the way the YouTube algorithm works, if you don't smash that thumbs up button, then uh, YouTube is much less likely to show you and other people our financial news and education videos. Between March and August, more than 100,000 restaurants closed their doors for good because of this pandemic, and we could see 85% of all independent restaurants shut down for good over the next six months to year. Here's how restaurants work. Restaurants are in the business of making delicious food. I don't know how appetizing that looks, but let's assume that that's some delicious food. Restaurants are in the business of making food and the median cost to open up a restaurant is $275,000 assuming that you're not owning the building. That's a lot of cash and a lot of people who are opening up restaurants don't have an extra few hundred thousand dollars sitting in their bank account to open up a restaurant and have cash in the bank to support their payroll costs for who knows how long until customers come in. So if you are starting a restaurant and you need $275,000 and you're like most people, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the bank and the bank is going to give you a loan for $275,000. Once you start the restaurant, then you gotta start making payments. Let me use the red marker for this. So as soon as you start this restaurant, you're gonna have to start making monthly payments to your bank for your loan. You're gonna have to pay rent. You're gonna have to pay salary costs. And you're gonna have to pay your suppliers Liars for food because if you want your vegetables and you want your meat and you want your coke you want your pepsi and you want your ketchup and your mustard that's a cost you have to pay to suppliers so every single month or every week or however you're doing it you're going to have money going out to all of these different costs the amount of money that you're paying here to your suppliers and food depend on how many customers you have coming into the restaurant because if you have a lot of happy customers Let's make them very happy. Draw a mustache and a beard and a turban, of course. If you have a lot of happy customers coming in and they're ordering a lot of guac, you're going to need more avocados. If for some reason your customers stop coming in, maybe they stop liking your food, or maybe there's a pandemic and people don't want to come to your restaurant, or maybe because you have social distancing measures you need to keep so you can't sell as much food. If there are less people coming into your restaurant and eating, so let's put an X here, then yeah, you can reduce how many supplies you order. Maybe you won't order as many avocados, maybe you won't order as much ketchup, whatever. But you still need to have some because you need to have fresh vegetables, you need to have fresh food, so you can't reduce it completely, but you can reduce this a little bit. But you can't reduce your salary costs, your rent costs, and your bank costs because you still need people to run the restaurant, you still need to pay rent, and you still need to keep paying your bank. If this business slowdown goes on long enough where you have less money coming in than you have going out, then eventually 
you're not going to be able to stay in business anymore because you always have money going out for your salary costs. You always have money going out for your rent. You always have money going out to the bank and you always are going to have money going out for supplies. But if you don't have enough money coming in, you're losing money by staying in business. If that happens, now you don't have the money to pay the bank anymore even though you have a contract to pay them back this $275,000. You don't have the money to pay your rent anymore even though you're on a lease and you don't have the money to pay your salaries anymore because you don't have a restaurant or a running business anymore so everybody goes home and if you're not selling food you're not buying any supplies. Remember what I said in the beginning of this video about how restaurant shutdowns don't happen in a bubble? Well, this is what happens. If you don't have the money to pay your rent, your landlord is gonna start hurting because your landlord probably has a mortgage or a loan on this building. And so if your landlord is not making any money, they're gonna have to start digging into their savings to pay their mortgage payment or their loan payment on this building. And if this goes on long enough and they drain their savings account, then your landlord is gonna run out of money and then the bank is gonna default on your landlord and the bank is gonna foreclose on the landlord and this is gonna hurt the entire real estate market. Your employees just lost a salary and if they can't find a new job quickly, they're not gonna have money to spend. And if they don't have money to spend, they might start racking up credit card debt that they can't pay back. They won't be able to pay their mortgage or their car payment and they're not gonna be out spending money at other businesses. So now, because these people are not making money, all the other businesses in your community are hurting. Your suppliers just lost a customer, you, and if this goes on long enough, then your suppliers are going to have to eventually downsize, which creates a whole new ripple of people not making money, which causes all of these problems. All this then goes back up to your bank because your bank has already taken a loss on your $275,000 loan that you can't pay anymore because you declared bankruptcy. And then if this goes on and your landlord can't continue making payments, then your bank is going to lose money here because your landlord is going to get foreclosed on. And if people don't have money to make their credit their card payments or their car payment or their mortgage, your bank is going to get hurt here. And if your suppliers are not making money and they have to downsize and they cannot make their loan payments, your bank gets hurt there. The reason why you need to understand this is because in 2020, there have been over 100,000 restaurant shutdowns because of this pandemic in just the first six months of this pandemic happening. That means this whole cycle of people not spending money at restaurants and restaurants not having money to pay their bank, their rent, their salary, and suppliers has happened more than a hundred thousand times. We haven't felt the effects of what's going to happen down the line yet because this all happens later, right? This is a ripple effect. This is just the first ripple and this is what happens later on if this continues to go on. The 2008 crash started with the housing market but that eventually rippled off into every single industry. The 2001 crash started off with dot-com companies and then that rippled off into every single industry. In 2020, every industry is hurting except maybe tech, but every industry besides tech is hurting and restaurants are some of the worst hurt. Some people don't feel comfortable eating out. Other people don't want to eat out in big groups and at the same time restaurants are trying to comply with social distancing measures. Restaurants don't want to be hotspots for this virus so they're limiting how many people can sit and eat in the restaurants but this is creating a new problem because people are making reservations to eat in restaurants and then they're not showing up. It's gotten so bad that some restaurants are actually thinking about charging you a no-show reservation fee. Now before I get into what this all means for our economy and what you need to know, if you are interested in staying up to date on the top finance and business news like this, the Minority Mindset has a free finance and business newsletter called Market Briefs where our team breaks down the top finance and business news and then we show you how this news affects your wallet every morning Monday through Friday with our free newsletter. You can subscribe to our free Market Briefs newsletter by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description below. By the way, our financial news emails are separate from our financial education emails. According to Yelp, the majority of small businesses that were temporarily shut down because of this pandemic are now permanently shut down with restaurants being the hardest hit. Remember, restaurants require you and other people to go inside and eat inside of the restaurants, which means restaurants depend on how much money people have and this pandemic. So the question we have to ask now is how much longer will this economic crisis last and how much longer will this pandemic last? It honestly feels like deja vu because the UK is starting 
starting the lockdowns again in England because they've been seeing an uptick in this virus. And so to combat that, they are shutting parts of their country down. And they said that they're watching the numbers to see if they're going to do another full nationwide lockdown. And actually, as I was scripting this video, I received news that the Netherlands are actually bringing back some of their lockdowns to help fight this virus too. This gives us in America a lot of uncertainty because as of October, the federal government has given a lot of power and deference to the states to decide how to fight this pandemic. Some states like California are very strict and they're limiting what businesses can be open and how many people can be outside, while other states like Florida don't care. But this could all change because we have a presidential election coming in November. And if Joe Biden wins, we could see a very different response to this pandemic. If that wasn't confusing enough, let me throw you a couple more curveballs. Health experts are worried about this virus surging in winter. If things get bad enough, chances are that states and the federal government are going to get more involved with business restrictions and potential lockdowns no matter who's in office. But you have to couple that with a new potential vaccine. Now, I don't know when this new vaccine is going to come out. President Trump says that we're going to have it before the election, but a lot of health experts say that it's going to come after the election. So here's where we are. We have over 100,000 restaurants across the country that are gone, that are not coming back, that is too late for but we have hundreds of thousands of other restaurants that are just kind of making it by because people are starting to come back. However, the small sign of life could just be one big tease because if this virus makes another surge, then people might be more scared to go out. We could see more social distance measures. We could see more lockdowns. That means more restaurants closing. But let's focus in on the money for a second. Because in early 2020, when this pandemic first started, the federal government created something called the PPP program or the Paycheck Protection Program, which helps small businesses like restaurants who are struggling stay in business. This PPP program essentially said that we, the federal government, will give you a restaurant or whatever business you are free money as long as you use this money to pay your rent to pay your employees and pay your regular business expenses to help you stay in business even though you were shut down. The catch is you can only take out eight weeks worth of money that you don't have to pay back. So you have this eight weeks worth of expenses that you have for free, but you also have to use this money to pay your salary for your employees so you can't fire people or lay them off. This program did a good job at getting money into the hands of businesses that needed it. And naturally, there were some people that tried to abuse the program by using this government money for things that, uh, let's just say, are not business related. Now, this PPP program expired in August. That means if you are a small restaurant that's hurting now, you can't get more free government money. And if you were able to qualify for eight weeks worth of money in August, that means your money is running dry in October. That means small businesses like restaurants are relying on people like you, customers, to survive. That means the future of restaurants are dependent on two things. This economic crisis, because if people don't have jobs, they don't have money to eat in restaurants. And this health crisis, this pandemic, because if there are more social social distancing measures, or if restaurants are forced to lock down, then they're not going to be making any money. So if you're investing in the restaurant space, you need to really understand what's going on and to see how your restaurant is affected by this pandemic, because some restaurants really are not that affected because they do a good job with drive throughs or they do a good job with carry out but other people and other restaurants don't. Now, before I let you go, I want to tell you that we have just completely upgraded our website, theminoritymindset.com. So if you have not checked it out yet, make sure you do that because we have just completely redone the entire thing. It's got an awesome new look. That way you can check out all of our articles. And we even created our own community feature. That way you can talk with, chat with, and network with other Minority Mindset thinkers. So if you haven't checked out our new Minority Mindset website yet, check it out at theminoritymindset.com. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with one friend. That way we can help spread the word. If you want to learn more about what you should be buying during this pandemic to build wealth, I already made a video on this and you can watch this video on YouTube by clicking this button right over here. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.